Hi, this is Zach from Morning Wound, and today I'll be taking a look at the Longines Avigation Big Eye Chronograph. This is a new release from Longines, came out within the last six months. It was sort of teased at Basel World 2017, but um, not officially released until uh, the fall of 2017. And I think um, it's, uh, you know, it's a fantastic release that I think has taken everyone a little bit by surprise, just from the sense of that it was like so popular, so well received. Uh, hits a lot of notes that I think people, you know, just look for currently. I know we look for in a release, particularly one based on historic models. Um, and it's just simply, you know, Longines kind of, uh, you know, nailing a watch, you know. Um, it's not the first watch we've seen that they've done from a, you know, historic perspective. Obviously, Longines is a, is a storied brand. They have hundreds of watches in their archives, if not thousands, they can bring back. And their heritage line tends to be the line that, you know, people like us have worn wound tend to, uh, you know, focus on. Uh, previously, you know, we had this the great um, uh, Conquest 1973, I believe was what it was called, a chronograph, a beautiful cushion case chronograph, really one of my, my favorite watches that I reviewed at that year, it was a few years ago. And um, you know, I think that this uh, really kind of takes the takes the reins from that guy as being like the next kind of most popular watch that they're uh, going to have released. So this one obviously has part and part of the heritage line. It's based on an old model or model they produced, but there is some mystery kind of behind that watch, which is to say a total and utter lack of good information about it. So you'll see some places that you know the watch is from. So basically, the story behind the watch is that a collector brought it to them. Um, they didn't have it in the museum, they didn't know about it, and they loved it. I guess they got it appraised and, um, you know, uh, verified, and then they decided to make this watch based on it. But it wasn't like, it's not like a, a model that you'll find anywhere. It's not, it wasn't a, like a popular or super collectible vintage model, though I bet people are trying to look for them now. Um, and information on it is is super scarce, scarce to the point of being kind of non-existent. So you'll see some conflicting information on this watch, you know. And I was just doing some research before this, and uh, in some places you'll see that it's based on the watch was from the 1930s. In other places you'll see that it's from the 70s. Um, to compare this to other watches that existed, something like the Breguets that also had a big eye, and big eyes referring to the oversized minute counter here at three, that was from like 1956, and it was kind of you know, uh, an extension of, I would say, probably like the Type 20 designs. And, you know, if you just think about the history of the chronographs, you have like some German wrist-mounted chronographs from the late 30s, but, you know, they didn't look quite like this yet. It's sort of a timeless design, you know, it has that military air to it. So a little hard to place, but call it early to mid 20th century military design. The big eye thing does feel like a little bit more mid-century, but other details such as these kind of more ornate hands do feel actually a little bit older. So like I said, it's sort of a mysterious uh, watch, but nevertheless, it's extremely attractive. Honestly, the story doesn't really matter when it's this good looking. I don't know, take it or leave it with that statement. But um, I think they just made a very appealing watch, a fun military chronograph. And in what's really nice for Longines, one that's a little bit more uh, accessibly priced. So this one is $2,065 with a column wheel movement, the L688, which is based on a Valjoux 7753. Uh, it's a great movement. It's column wheel, as I said, which, you know, you don't really see other than in the Siegel 19, ST19 movements, but it's kind of an outlier. You don't see that often uh, at this price point. And just for reference, comparing this to that Longines 1973 I referred to, that was well into the three. So at 2625, this is a very good deal, and that's MSRP. So street price will obviously be uh, even better. Uh, so yeah, let's take a closer look. The case of the Avigation Big Eye, um, it's a really interesting case, to be honest. So first off, it's 41 millimeters in diameter, 48.77 millimeters long, and about 14.7 millimeters tall here. So, you know, it's about uh, the, what you'd expect from kind of a modern uh, chronograph, but I think it scales a little bit differently. Like, I, to me, this feels like a well-sized chronograph. Um, 41, um, not too big. 
Obviously, it would be larger than the original, but I don't know. This watch just doesn't feel oversized, in my opinion. You know, the lug to lug is pretty tame, and the proportions are really excellent, especially when you kind of look at what they're playing with and what they're trying to achieve. And there's some cool little tricks that are going on here. So looking at the design, you know, from the top, it seems like a very simple design. You can see that slab sides, huge pushers here, which is one of the kind of more interesting design features of the watch to begin with. You know, there's just these massive pushers. And what those kind of do is make the watch look smaller. You know, I mean, those are almost pushers on proportion for if this watch were, you know, in the mid 30s. Um, that's a cool little trick. And uh, I think it works really well. And it just is fun. I mean, these are just massive pushers. They feel nice. Um, they look good. You'll see on the wrist, they don't really interfere with your hand at all either. So I think that it was a bit of a risky detail, but one that actually worked out really well. Then you'll also see some interesting finishing here. So you have some polishing, or rather some brushing along the tops of the lugs in the case, but then you have a line of polish here. And so what's actually going on, it's a little bit easier to see from the side, is that this is a step case design. Um, now step cases definitely more refer more to the earlier 20th century designs. So once again, that would go to support this watch being, you know, 30s, 40s perhaps. Um, and, you know, it's just a beautiful detail. One, once again, that definitely speaks to that older time period when we haven't seen much. Um, Baltic actually did that with their watches inspired by Longines watches from that era. So it's nice to see them use it here. And it's a beautiful case design. You know, it's really simple, but it has just enough kind of decorative elements to really stand out and pop. And you'll see here, you know, your step, polish, and then into this really nice box sapphire crystal. Once again, just you know the correct element there for the modern version of this. And while looking at the side too, you can see how the case uh, from the side might not actually be what you expect to see. So you have this kind of funny way of the lugs kind of, kind of uh, popping out from the mid case here, which is otherwise slab. Um, that actually reminds me of what you'll see on the hand hearts, which are once again speaking to those watches from the 1930s. So you know that's a very kind of vintage design element to uh, as well. So you know, honestly, the watch that they got in must just be a very strange watch. But you know, here is this recreation. And everything looks just great. It just works out really well. We have a nice signed crown here, too. Quickly now, just flipping the watch over, you have a steel solid case back, screw down. Um, nice little long jeans etching in the middle there. Nothing fancy. They didn't put the, the, you know, the display window here, which um, I can go both ways on, honestly. I think they did something nice here. I think um, it uh, feels appropriate, obviously, for the watch whenever it be, plus a military watch would never have a display case back. That said, I'm pretty sure that L688 movement is uh, a very decent looking movement. Looking now at the dial of the Longines Navigation Big Eye Chronograph, um, you'll see very clear military influence here and obviously where the name Big Eye comes from. So it is a, uh, you know, a three uh, register chronograph, 369. At three, you have this oversized minute counter. Obviously the idea being to put the emphasis on the minutes, which would be the most important for, uh, you know, usage by pilots, etc navigation, navigation, aviation kind of mix there, um, obviously speaking to that. And then you have uh, this design which speaks to, you know, like those earlier uh, military designs. It's not like an, um, maybe what you think of now as being more of a kind of classic Flieger or anything like that. It's a little bit of like the mix of that field pilot, but still very traditional military. So you have um, large numerals, uh, you know, alphanumeric numerals. Those are all loomed. They're cut off at three, six, and nine, obviously, for the uh, chronograph here. Um, around that, then, you have printed in white uh, minute or cr and chronograph second markers. Those are not loomed, unfortunately. And then you have the subdial. So like I said, the big subdial three, all lines, really bold, really graphic, you know, that symmetry that gets thrown off there, I think really kind of makes the personality of this watch. That subdial jumps right into the two and the four, cutting them off. You know, it just really kind of builds up the, um, 
you know, the feeling of, uh, of importance of that subdial, but also makes the watch kind of quirky and fun in you know, a way that I think makes this um, really, uh, you know, just a, a unique watch, especially uh, to be released now. Um, at uh, six, you have the 12 hour counter. At nine, you have the active seconds counter. Um, I'll start that up for you guys to see that running. Uh, obviously, column wheel chronograph in here starts real smooth, runs real smooth. Um, you'll notice uh, the hands now. So you just have kind of very simple, uh, you know, baton hands for the hour and the minute, loom filled. Uh, and then uh, the various other hands are kind of like a blasted steel. So a stick here for the seconds and something a little bit more ornate, sort of like a, a spade sword kind of a thing for the uh, hour, the, the chronograph functions. I like that little bit of ornate touch. I think it separates them out nicely and definitely gives them more of an earlier 20th century feel rather than a mid 20th century feel. Uh, one thing I also have to, uh, well, two things actually have to really applaud Longines on here. Uh, one is what it's lacking, which is a date. A date would not have fit well on this dial. Um, it would have, you know, it's already a very busy dial. There's a lot going on. Where would a date have gone even? And, you know, we so often see watches where, um, particularly from, honestly, you know, no, no insult, but from Swatch Group brands where it feels like a date gets shoehorned in at the last minute. And, um, it just, you know, it's always that one thing, that one thing you get annoyed at. It's not here, there's no date window. We don't even have to talk about it anymore. The next is that even though this is a vintage inspired watch, they didn't go with that kind of old radium loom, which we see so often. Sometimes it works, sometimes it looks great, but it's not necessary all the time. And I think here using that kind of, you know, acid green um, C3 loom, which is also glows very nicely, uh, was the right choice because, you know, there's a difference between a throwback watch being like a kind of a recreation and a watch meaning to look like it's vintage. And this watch doesn't, it doesn't want to look like it's vintage. It just wants to look like that old watch. So I think that that was just the correct choice and aesthetically um, it's, uh, it's very appealing. On the wrist, the Avigation Big Eye uh, wears very well. You know, it is, it's not a petite watch, but it doesn't feel oversized either. Uh, 41 millimeters, I think is a, a size that works for this watch, you know. What, 39 or 40 may have been better? I don't know. You know, I mean, I, the things that on this watch that can't change, obviously, would be the location of those subdials. And I think that the proportioning of the dial works really well. So if you made this any smaller, you would obviously have been encroaching on those or making them busier or maybe scaling down. You know, there's the little tricks people could use, but I think things feel really right and balanced currently on the dial. And so building out from there, I think the case feels appropriate. Plus the 48.77 millimeter lug to lug, that's very uh, tolerable, I think. You know, it's really when you hit around 50 that you potentially, given the design of the watch, it kind of changes. You might get more of an overhang. This is speaking, of course, for my seven inch wrist, but um, 48.77 isn't bad. The watch is a bit tall. No way around that with these, uh, with automatic watches, automatic chronographs, particularly ones from a Valju 7750 family. They always are a bit tall. Um, I think we regularly see them in the 14 to 15 range, and this is right in there. Um, I think when they cross 15 is when you start to get into a little bit of an uncomfortable situation. But here, um, you know, it's just kind of what you expect. It's a chunky kind of sporty watch with a nice military design. Um, and yeah, I mean, really, you know, getting past the, the fit and feel of this watch, aesthetically, it is just so cool. This is a really great looking watch. I mean, you know, uh, for people who like military watches, um, as we all clearly do at Warner Wound, for those who like chronographs, as we all clearly do at Warner Wound, this hits just so many notes. And it's so balanced and so legible. Um, and it's a little fun and a little quirky. It's not just a military chronograph or a pilot chronograph. It's a big eye chronograph. And, you know, big eye chronographs really are, uh, well, now, I mean, they're basically unheard of. They're uncommon. Just, it's just not a detail that gets used. And even in the vintage world, you know, it's just something that is, that is very uncommon. You see Breguet, you see Universal Genève, now Longines, um, but not too many others that at least come to my mind. And it's a great design feature because it's, it's a little funky, it's a little quirky. It just gives something uh, personality. It's throwing in something unexpected in an otherwise very kind of serious and stoic, uh, you know, uh, vocabulary of design. So I think it just works super well. You know, it works with the kind of clothing I wear every day. 
It comes on, a, uh, I think, a nice looking strap. Uh, it's a 20 millimeter lug here. It's sort of a, a vintage -y kind of leather strap. It has some nice grain to it. Like it's, it's um, uh, if you get up close to it, you can see there's a nice texture there, stitching all around. Um, just a very, you know, it's, 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 a, it, it's a strap that just works with the aesthetic. It's a little bit rugged. You know, I'm glad to see they didn't put anything glossy on there or frankly too new feeling. Um, this has, has a little bit of wear and it'll probably wear in nicely uh, as well. Um, naturally though, this would work well on, on nylon straps, canvas straps. I think it actually could look kind of cool on a bun strap even though that's you know, not historically quite probably accurate for this watch but it just might uh, seem kind of uh, fun. So to wrap up, uh, Longines has, I think, a real winner here with their Avocation Big Eye Chronograph. In fact, that's, you know, that's already been proven. This won uh, the 2017 Revival Prize at the uh, Grand Prix de Horlogerie de Genève. Sorry if I butchered that. But that's not you know, an award that goes, I think, very often to a brand like Longines, let alone to a $2,625 watch. Um, you know, I it just speaks for itself that's getting a lot of wide appeal. And it's just, you know, they just, like I said, they nailed it, kind of all these notes. It's a great design. It's well-sized. It's obviously well-made, as you expect from Longines. It has a very good movement in it. And it also has a reasonable price of 2625 for a Longines chronograph. And once again, that's MSRP street price you know, will likely come down, secondhand price will be good. So, you know, this is, might be a very obtainable and just very appealing Swiss-made military automatic chronograph that frankly just doesn't look like other things that are out there. Uh, so please read the full review on Warren & Wound. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you.